Welcome to pre-math. In this video, we are going to solve this given absolute value function. So we got uh, absolute value of x square minus 49 equals to absolute value of uh, 3x plus 21. And in other words, we are going to solve for x. And moreover, we are going to check our solutions as well. Please don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe. So let's go ahead and get started with the solution. And before we proceed any further, let's talk about absolute value pretty quick. So let's recall the absolute value of some negative number. The absolute value of negative 7 is going to be always positive 7 because uh, absolute value means that the distance from zero. How about if I say absolute value of seven, that is gonna stay same, positive seven, and the absolute value of zero is going to be simply zero. Therefore, in general, we are going to define this absolute value of x equals to x if x is greater than are equal to 0 and this absolute value of x is going to be negative x if x is less than 0. And now let's focus on this part x square minus 49 and here I have copied it down let's focus on this 49. 49 could be written as 7 square so therefore we can write this one as x square minus 7 square and now we can see that this represents the difference of two squares now let's go ahead and use this famous identity a square minus b square so therefore this could be written as x minus 7 times x plus 7 so therefore the left hand side of this equation could be written as the absolute value of x plus 7 times x minus 7 equals to and here on the right hand side 3 is in common so I can write the absolute value of 3 times x plus 7 in the absolute value and now let's go ahead and move this uh, absolute value on the left hand side so we can write this whole thing the absolute value of x plus 7 times the absolute value of x minus 7 and this become minus the absolute value 3 times x plus 7 and uh, we have a 0 now on the right hand side and here in this next step I have broken down this absolute value into two individual absolute value and put a times inside and then over in the next one I brought three outside and now we can see that this absolute value of x plus 7 and this absolute value of x plus 7 they are in common so we can factor them out so let's go ahead and factor that uh, x plus 7 the absolute value outside and inside the bracket we're going to have the absolute value of x minus 7 and then minus 3 equals to 0. Now we can see we have a two factors equal to 0. Let's go ahead and separate them. I can write the first one absolute value of x plus 7 equals to 0 or the other one I'm going to write down the absolute value of x minus 7 and then minus 3 equals to 0. Now let's focus on this absolute value of x plus 7 equal to 0. So that means our x plus 7 value is going to be 0. So that means x value turns out to be simply negative 7 and now let's focus on this equation let me go ahead and call this as an equation number 1 and now let's go ahead and apply this absolute value definition on this part x minus 7 when x is greater than or equal to 0 therefore in case 1 I'm going to say if this x minus 7 is greater than 
are equal to zero. So therefore, this absolute value of x minus seven could be written as the absolute value of x minus seven equals to positive x minus seven. So therefore, our this equation one is going to become when we apply this definition, this is going to become x minus seven and minus three equal to zero. Let's combine the like terms. So this become x minus 10 equal to zero. That means x value turns out to be simply positive 10. And now let's focus on once again x minus seven and we are going to consider this second case when x is less than zero so therefore in our this second case i can write if this x minus seven is less than zero so that means our this absolute of x minus seven is going to be equal to negative times x minus seven which is same as negative x and then this become plus 7 so therefore our this equation 1 is going to simply become negative x plus 7 and then minus 3 equals to 0 so therefore our x value turns out to be simply positive 4 and here's our final step let's go ahead and check all our these three solutions x equal to negative 7 x equal to 10 and x equal to 4. now let's go ahead and check our solution x equal to negative 7 that means wherever we see x i am going to replace it by negative 7 and see if the left hand side is equal to right hand side and here we plugged it in and we can see that zero turns out to be equal to zero and this indeed is a true statement so therefore we are going to conclude that this indeed is uh, x equal to negative seven is our solution and now let's go ahead and check our solution at x equal to 10 and here i plugged in this x equal to 10 value and we can see that the left hand side is 51 and the right hand side is uh, 51 as well so we can see that this is indeed a true statement so therefore we conclude that x equals to 10 is our valid solution as well and now finally let's check the solution at x equal to 4 and here we applied x equal to 4 and we can see that 33 turns out to be equal to 33 this indeed is a true statement so therefore we conclude that x equals to 4 is a valid solution as well so thus our solutions turns out to be x equal to negative 7 x equal to 4 and x equal to 10 thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more exciting videos bye